Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everyone, uh, welcome to the uh, NPTEL uh, online certification course Advanced Aquaculture Technology. My name is Professor Gaurav Bhomi. I am from the Agriculture and Food Engineering Department of IIT Kharagpur. So in this module, this module 5, uh, we will be discussing about the technology of larval rearing, uh, larval rearing and the in the hatchery in the first lecture module that lecture material that I will be discussing. The concepts that will be covered in this lecture uh, is like the hatchery and its operation, the important consideration for hatchery design, what are the components of hatchery, the brood stock unit, uh, life food unit, larval rearing unit, uh, winding unit, etc. Okay. I will be discussing each and every units and how, what are the design consideration and all that we need to think about, we need to um, uh, discuss about like before going for designing a, a proper uh, aquaculture farm, the, the hatchery. Okay. So in general, what is hatchery? You know what is hatchery, right? It is a facility for producing the fish fingerlings suitable for stocking in grow out pond. So hatchery is the place where we start from like say like from the egg to the like even, even, the, even before the egg like then the, the, we take the brood stocks and all. So from we um, try to you know help them to grow the help them to you know go for all those fertilizations and all they help them to sorry go for this uh, uh, laying the eggs and all and at the end so we from that stage to the fingerling stage we take care of in in hatchery then we the once it is it reaches the fingerling stage we take it out and we put it in the grow out pond to go for the further mature we wait for it to be matured enough for its marketable stage. Uh, so that we can uh, harvest it and we can uh, simply sell it in the market okay or we can use it for other purposes so in general hatchery has a number of a certain number of ponds for stocking the brood fish uh, for to prepare them for the spawning activity we have a particular number of nursing ponds because after the spawning is done this post normal stage till the frying stage that nurturing period is uh, covered in the nursing pond then we go for this rearing point when it reaches the when the, the aquatic species it reaches the fry stage and till the fingerling stage we keep them there so it's like you know like human uh, like us only like we like from the from the birth and like you know till the like certain certain age we are like child and then we become uh, adult so the moment we are adult we will let them into the grow out point okay so the moment they uh, reach to the this adult stage will throw them in the grow out pond. So once they are in the grow out pond, then it is not a, a matter of hatchery, then it is a it's completely different sector. So completely different uh, ideal uh, like you know, fundamentals that we normally provide. So that is the other part of the designing of farm. In this lecture material, we will only be discussing about the hatchery. Okay? So in hatchery, we do like spawning, the egg incubation, hatching, rearing, hatchling, to post larval stage all these things are happening in the this uh, you know uh, in the hatchery in like especially in the uh, in the brood stock ponds and all okay so these growth stages are highly sensitive and hence larval rearing is a very crucial and the difficult stage step and this is why uh, the design of hatchery should be optimal and very clean uh, it has to be very uh, how, how to say it has to be properly maintained uh, cleanliness is one of the important thing and uh, also uh, the cheaper the design the better the productivity the better, better the how to say the economic return right so the operations of uh, operations in a hatchery the major, major operations that is carried out in a hatchery as we already discussed first the brood stock rearing right you collect the brood stock who which are like 
uh, in a perfect shape and perfect desirable uh, uh, body mass index, desirable structural uh, integrity and all is there. So, we collect those bootstock and we manage them, we rear them in the inner pond. So, this is called the bootstock rearing and all. Then we let them uh, come to the rearing, once they are coming to the spawning stage, we put them in a proper uh, spawning uh, container, with the, we have a proper uh, arrangements for their spawning activity to take place, so that the eggs will start hatching after a day or two, and depending upon the aquatic species that we are culturing. Then it will, it will go for the rearing, larval rearing, then post larval, and uh, once it will reach the fingerling stage, we harvest and transport it to the uh, uh, into the grow out ponds, right. So, most important operation in the hatchery is the larval rearing, okay. Spawning and hatching, stocking larva, feeding and the water management. So, these four are the very important points that we need to worry about when we will be discussing, when we will be designing a, a hatchery, when we will be um, like uh, operating a hatchery and uh, these are the operating parameters also we can call like say like water management feeding requirement or the feeding interval or the feeding uh, capacity that you have to uh, think about depending upon the size. Because in this stage, each day they will be multiplying in the each day they will their body mass will be multiplying in uh, nature like in, 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 in a certain manifolds like I am like in I am not talking about a huge number, but it's like it's, it, it will go very fast, it will grow very fast. You know that the early stage of development of any animal be any uh, organism. Because of that, their feeding requirement will also vary like anything, okay. So, and also their feeding can be initially you can in for the initial day only you just cannot just feed them with the like you know uh, dry pellets and all, okay. No, it has to be initial days their feeding requirement is different. They cannot have those the, 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 those kind of food which are which they cannot digest. Even they can, even if they can like it, it is not be of their use actually, okay. It will not help them for their development. So, you need to think about what type of feed you are giving, what is the feeding rate, what is the feeding capacity, all this feed conversion ratio and all, all this you have to think about, okay. The stocking density is very important, what is the stocking density of larva that you are providing to your system and based on that you have to optimize the system and all, okay. So, what is the significance of uh, larval rearing? Because wild fry stocks drastically reduce due to the overfishing change of coastal environmental condition, the pollution in the freshwater resources and all. Because of all these reasons, so the, 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 the wild fry stocks are getting lost. So, we need to have a hatchery, we need to have this, we need to have more and more this kind of systems. So, to grow uh, our own uh, you know uh, like uh, aquacultural products. Wild population obviously, it fluctuate unpredictably and is harvested beyond sustainable limit. So, that is why you can just cannot rely on wild production at the most often there is no wild production available at this moment. Like it is like I am not saying no means it is like 0 amount, there are ample amount, but they are already in a very uh, extensive stage. So, we just do not go for uh, it is better to for a practice uh, you know as an engineering point of view, it is better to practice to uh, better for us to practice for a sustainable uh, engineering solutions for uh, growing uh, this uh, uh, bio, uh, biolog biological uh, systems for this living organisms. And it is doable, there are ample amount of research available, experts available on this field to just go and just do it, it is it's, 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 it's very much uh, affordable also. S another thing is like you know in case of uh, uh, wild catch, it is uh, wild fry stocks, they are uncertain and unreliable supply. So, you cannot be 100 percent sure that uh, you know. Uh, you will get a certain amount of fry available for your grow out pond to have a uh, certain amount of marketable um, products, okay. So, for that the development of larval rearing uh, or the seed production hatch uh, in the hatcheries it is like it will, uh, it will have an impact on it. Hatchery production ensures the steady state supply of seed for the aquaculture, which is like the major input for the aquaculture sector, right. So, what are the consideration for uh, hatchery design? As I already discussed, when we will be discussing about designing or like developing or constructing of hatchery, there are a lot of technical solutions that has to offer for the best guarantee in terms of uh, the reliability, ease of use, production capacity, hygienic uh, working conditions and the cost effectiveness. These are the five very basic 
criteria that has to be fulfilled isn't it why reliability because you cannot just go for uh, designing a hatchery for a particular aquatic species which has uh, like you know suppose they needs a certain amount of space for this particular stock intensity but you are providing less than that so definitely they will be having um, uh, five for like in first of all they will uh, they cannot survive because of the requirement of the environmental uh, point of view because say like say they need higher diesel oxygen but you increase the stock intensity like anything so they cannot sustain in that particular situation first and second thing they will have a competition among themselves about the feed they will not survive so there are a lot of things ease of use production capacity you have to think about like what is the production capacity and based on that you have to design the hatchery from the beginning so you cannot just first design the hatchery and then think about the what will be the production capacity that's a very uh, foolish design foolish uh, ideology hygienic working condition that's very important because unless until you have a hygienic working condition there is a chance of a uh, very frequent uh, disease outbreak in your farming product so the moment you will have a very frequent disease outbreak what will happen it will reduce your economic return even sometimes if, if you are uh, not lucky enough it can give you a, a huge loss also for your systems because these are living organisms right so you just cannot play with it like there is even small mid disease outbreak can cost you like fortune because it will just completely lose your product so hygienic uh, working condition is very important that we need to uh, rely we need to think upon cost effectiveness obviously like you just we have to design it accordingly so that the our capital cost or the even recurring or all uh, non recurring cost has to be uh, has a proper like in in it is designed in such a way that it has a very low payback period and all so and also it it will definitely start giving you return after couple of month or couple of years uh, depending upon the size of the uh, farm depending upon the species that you're targeting and all in general the size of the hatchery must be decided prior to the site selection technical or the financial plan okay the factors uh, which is deciding the uh, size of a hatchery is like the main fish species and the secondary species uh, yearly targets number of fry or the size of the fry uh, for each species origin of egg is it a internal production or some other sources that you are collecting the eggs from okay that's a, that's an important factor photo period or the thermo period manipulation to shift the reproductive cycles uh, marketing aspects like fish size and the season for sales so these five are the very important factors which decides the size of the hatchery okay what is the photo period and thermo period manipulation every reproductive cycle you know like you know every species has its own uh, comfort range for the um, amount of sunlight requirement amount of um, um, temperature that it uh, can grow very easily so all these things are there so for how long suppose you are growing a pond in a some polar region where there is like 24 uh, like in the winter season there is like 24 hour of like continuous night right like it's like not 24 it's like a couple of months of continuous night there is no sunlight at all so i'm just giving you an example okay this is don't take it seriously like it's not just an example like in this case what you're going to do you have to design your hatchery in such a way so uh, that uh, you, you you can uh, you know kind of manipulate the photo period and you can uh, utilize uh, either by uh, using the artificial sunlight by you know led lamps and all and all these things or you just go for an obviously the thermo uh, period manipulation for the to shift the reproductive cycle in such a way so that the temperature also you can maintain and the temp the at that particular period the hatchery uh, the, 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 the the particular period of production is enough for the temperature that is away that is dwelling that is uh, available there i mean like that is uh, there and that particular time is uh, enough for the for the reproductive cycle so you have to do this kind of uh, design when you will be designing you have to think about this uh, beforehand before even you start your farm if you see this uh, design it's like a very generalized design okay it's a general uh, hatchery layout so these blue uh, lines are the waning point units. Uh, the one is the uh, phytozooplankton units uh, A. Uh, this uh, the dark uh, yellow one. Light yellow one is the larval rearing units. The green one is the broodstock unit. Okay. So these four are the important points, right? What does that do? If you see the number A, 
uh, phytozooplankton unit. What do you think? Why we need zooplankton? Why we need phytoplankton? This is nothing but this is the living feed that will be available for your hatchery, for your say like for your stream hatchery, for suppose you are doing for a mud crab hatchery. So you will be like these are the this is the living feed that you are culturing in your hatchery itself, which is very important. You cannot have you cannot supply living feed from outside source because it will take time and it is a highly perishable item. So it you'll give you'll have a high loss. You have to design your hatchery such a way that you will provide all the feed, most of them at least uh, by your hatchery itself, like in your hatchery itself, right? So this living feed can be uh, for the earliest earlier stage of development. It can be Artemia pond, small Artemia pond, uh, or the brine fishes and all. You can have a phytoplankton or zooplankton small units. So that will be helpful for your uh, larva, uh, for your uh, as a feed for your larval stage. So first we have this uh, proper, you know, uh, uh, this, this we call it this vivid, uh, this female in the broodstock unit. So they have this unit. So from the broodstock unit, they will be properly cultured, properly care, taken care, uh, uh, taken care of, and then from there, the once they will spawn, there is a proper spawning units. From the spawning units, it will come to the larval rearing unit. In the larval rearing unit, once it will reach up to a fry stage, then it will be uh, take it, it will be transported to the weaning unit. So it's like a huge one where there they can easily uh, sustain. They can uh, they will grow up to the fingerling stage and then they will be transported to the grower ponds. You got my point? So that's how that's how it works. What are the service units that it requires in a uh, hatchery? First of all, the pumping station. So, which will take the water, thus if it is like a sea water is necessary, it will take the sea water from the, from the lower, you know, nearest uh, sea water station and from there it will take it to the, your farm. You have to have a laboratory to, disc, to you know, proper laboratory, it can be any size, you know, like if you can see this uh, long panel on the very top or in the right side, there will be like, say like a uh, door, there you can have a small laboratory and all. Or you can have it outside also. You can see in the bottom left also. Uh, there also you can have the laboratory to discuss to you know to uh, do the research on the amount of food that is required based on the size that you calculate. So you can check about the disease uh, if they are having any disease or not. You can have underwater cameras by which you can do the behavioral behavioral analysis by which you can identify that if the uh, your target your farming product is already catching any um, disease or not okay so there are uh, advanced technologies available and all uh, so which uh, you can read more in the literature so uh, i cannot give all the details in a, in this lectures in a way i have a very limited time uh, for all this so uh, if you ask me i'll give you more details in later like in uh, my uh, other lecture materials or um, uh, in, uh, you can even simply Google it uh, to find more in details. There should be room for electricity room, electricity uh, for feed storage for offices and all where you will be doing all the official formalities and all. So all this has to be there. So all these units has to be there when you will be designing a proper hatchery. Okay, just so remember these points. So also remember this you, this drawing also. We'll, we are going to discuss more in details in uh, in coming slides about this. First blue winding unit, deep blue photo and zooplankton unit, larval rearing unit in between, then the brood stock unit. Okay, how they will be connected? I'll be discussing soon. So in case of brood stock unit, what we do? We maintain adequate stock of parent fish to assure that the timely supply of fertilized egg of the best quality to the larval rearing sector. Right. So the broodstock units have the facilities placed both outdoor or maybe the indoor. Outdoor facilities are mainly used for long term, long term stocking purposes and also for the quarantine treatment. Uh, indoor facilities are mainly used for overwintering or where the severe winter conditions could affect the fish survival. We can shift the reproduction period by manipulation of temperature and photo period as we discussed and also for the spawning purpose. We do not do spawning in the outdoor tanks, we keep it inside. We, because spawning is a very sensitive uh, phenomenon, so we uh, keep it in the inside in a very controlled environment. Okay, in the indoor tanks. Then the life food unit, as we discussed, you remember the life food unit? It is like the deep, uh, the, the, the the deep yellow one, the left bottom side. We discussed in the design. 
it it's what is its function to grow the rotifers microalgae uh, which is like sort of as a life food for the fish larva right the unit can have a separate sub units first the phytoplankton and rotifer pure strains and the small volume culture for you know very beginning of your uh, culture species or the say like uh, for your fish larva for your shrimp larva then phytoplankton and the rotifer back culture then rotifer mass culture and enrichment then artemia nuclei mass production and enrichment and the laboratory test so this units should be there in the life food unit where from there you can taste and you can identify uh, you can capture different stages of your life uh, food and you just provide it to your culture species okay hence in general we the first three sub units uh, it should be contiguous to simplify the uh, working routines as we told you like the phytoplankton rotifer pure strains their back culture and their mass culture this actually uh, this three different steps of the same production process actually we collect it and we give it at different stages of our larval rearing uh, unit uh, i mean like the our culture species they should be placed very close to the larval rearing unit to reduce the transportation distance because it's a perishable item you just catch it you give it as a feed you don't uh, or otherwise it will take a lot of distance definitely it has to be stored properly in a in a how to say proper um, ice uh, tanks or ice um, even they just don't go for it you know it's it's better to not go for any kind of uh, freezing uh, technology in this kind of uh, small uh, mic, uh, this uh, life feeding techniques life feeding techniques we do not go for it, it is doable it, if it if it, even it is if it is really not possible then go for it but uh, prefer not to go for any kind of uh, preservation techniques for uh, uh, or any freezing techniques for uh, transporting this life feeds for uh, your food and all okay it has to be life it from the name itself you can understand it has to be life why it has to be life because most of the cases the larva the, it will be very hard for them to uh, find out this uh, dead food like i mean like find out the pellets and all life it they will keep on moving so the what happened this larva they can sense it and they can go and they can have it so it's like a additional uh, requirements for uh, them to have food that's why we go for this life food and all okay then there comes the larval rearing unit the light blue one that you remember you saw so in this light larval rearing unit uh, in general it uh, place in a large room with the you know tanks for the egg incubation cleaning and disinfection facility and then the cold storage for live food storage you can have it if it is like in a completely different and very far away okay larval rearing it requires a very controlled light condition you know you are kind of manipulating the uh, sunlight uh, the natural sunlight here Uh, larva are harvested by draining the tanks and thus proper drainage must be must be provided and the screen channels under the floor with a slope of at least 2% should be made you know to get rid of the unwanted uh, materials and then this weaning units where it functioned as a metamorphosed uh, you know fish can grow after 45 days of uh, old and they can grow up to 2 to 3 g of size and it is an intermediate step between the culture of small delicate post form post larva and the much stronger juveniles okay in this weaning units it's like a enlarged form of larval rearing units only its design can be as same as that optimum water circulation is very much important for to provide the ample amount of dissolved oxygen and to avoid any water stratification or the dead zone in this kind of systems okay here comes the uh, system again here comes the design again it's a generalized design just to give you an idea about it don't go for it as a standard it's not a standard design it just i'm giving you just a uh, concept uh, conceptual idea about it so if you see in this kind of structure in this kind of hatchery design how they are interrelated okay among the units and the system green unit the deep green it's a what we are doing we are doing the phytoplankton or any microalgae production there okay then there comes this uh, uh, deep green, uh, deep uh, yellow one or the maroon one there will be producing artemia we can produce we can produce zooplankton so over there okay from there it will come to the larval uh, uh, rearing units what is the larval rearing units this is like this light green one okay so there is the larval rearing units and the right bottom it's like the green one deep green one again so it's like a it's a, the, like a, the the root stock pond from where is it the parent ponds per parent uh, fishes they uh, they are ready to spawn and they actually when they they spawn that fishes are that 
spawning this after this there is like spawning tank or spawning uh, unit. So, in the small spawning unit we wait for a couple of hours or so the once it will hatch once it the eggs uh, are hatched then we uh, transfer them into the larval rearing units. Okay. From there it will go once it will reach to the fingerling unit it will go to the um, I mean like so the fry stage it will go to the uh, waning unit which is like the blue one which is in the top right. So, all these cases the feed is has to be delivered you see the feed uh, F uh, that has to be delivered at each stage. Sometimes feed uh, can be delivered in the larval rearing tank also, but most of the cases larval rearing tanks are okay with uh, the feed coming from the uh, live feed units. That is how they are connected that is how when you will be designing you have to think about all these things you know, all these units available in your farm available in your hatchery. Okay. In a well designed hatchery it should consider proper production flow, harmonious distribution of systems to facilitate the work uh, like every hour, increase safety and obviously the hygienic condition it reduces it has to reduce the construction and the management cost. These are the important uh, parameters that you have to think before you design a hatchery. Okay. The most important groups of relationship uh, to be taken into consideration are those related to the production systems and the works. Production relationships involves the production flow which first comes from the live food unit then larval rearing then the winding unit. Okay. System relationships various units may share the spaces or facilities. Facilities. What is work relationships between the hatchery systems and the manpower requirements. So, this production relation system relation and the work relation these are these management terms that you have to uh, you can google it you can search for it you can what is these things and how to uh, develop your knowledge more about it and to so to so you know once you will be a technology provider for an aquaculture sector or you will be having your own aquaculture farm so you'll think about all these relationships better and you can utilize it in your design okay so in conclusion so hatchery it plays a major role in ensuring the reliable supply of seed or the fingerlings for the aquaculture sectors and the design of these systems must be carried out in such a way that the best possible technical solutions are applied. Okay. So, it is really doable and there are like ample amount of research available, ample amount of facilities available, uh, papers available on this kind of strong uh, kind of year and I will more I will, I will discuss more in the coming lecture also like uh, about the design and construction of hatcheries, but I hope you will you have already understood and uh, the, 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 the importance of the larval rearing and why the hatchery is very important at this stage and why in aquaculture sectors hatchery is one of the major components. Okay. So, the larval rearing is in general is a crucial operations which governs the availability of most important input in aquaculture that is the fish seed right. Rearing of fish larva is a challenging part of fish culture because of larvas are mostly they are sensitive to the water quality they have a very high nutritional requirement and they require the use of live feed I told you live feed because they, they, they are in larval stage they are uh, all these sensory systems are not as established enough as the as once they reach the juvenile stage or once they reach the uh, fingerling or, or the adult stage. So, because of that uh, the live feed are more uh, useful they can they can easily identify because of their locomotion and they can go and have it. So, and also the nutritional requirement because they are in their early stage of development they need a very high nutrition and proper diet um, has to be maintained for them to grow. And also they are very sensitive to the water quality as I already discussed because even if a certain very minimal changes in the water quality say like only the pH is changed because of that for us it is like does not matter like if and if it is like from 6 to 5, 7 to 6 or 6 to 5.5, but for larva it will happen it will affect a lot because they are very very sensitive they are uh, overall uh, shield like you know like the, the skin is like the, the, the body is very much sensitive to even minor environmental changes. That is why we need to think about the water quality and all these things as well. So, these are the references from which I have taken the informations and you can go uh, and check those uh, papers. Uh, so, if you go through it you will get a more knowledge about it how uh, uh, this uh, inf uh, how these um, things are happening. Okay. So, uh, in general so uh, thank you uh, so much uh, we will discuss more details about the design of hatcheries in coming lecture. See you.